Hi, this is Sky Perry with SSP Innovations. I'm here today to give you a tour of some of the tools we've been working on for migrating your data from the current 1021 geometric network into the new utility network within ArcGIS Pro. We're going to start off by looking here at ArcMap and we are at 1021 ArcMap in a uh, SDE database. And I'm going to go in and just show you a little bit here that we are looking at some uh, realistic data here. Down to the level where we have transformers, we have service points, there is connectivity here as well through a geometric network. So this is effectively good data that we can use. And we'll be using this data as a sample data set here to trace out and bring across a circuit from, again, 1021 geometric network into utility network. So let's first, before we jump into that, talk a little bit about how this process will occur. The first stage here is that we're actually utilizing the geometric network at 1021 through an SSP utility network translation engine. And this engine is effectively a batch app that's very configurable down to the nth degree that will take the data and move it into a staging geodatabase, which is very important because we're going to do some uh, quality assurance there. Things that we are going to map within this uh, include things on the geometric ne network such as feature class and subtype, moving to an asset group and asset type, or handling offsets terminal configurations of your utility network. We're promoting unit data where appropriate uh, from being related objects into asset groups and asset types, uh, containment associations, structural attachment associations, and connectivity associations. If you're not familiar with these terms, we advise you to go ahead and read our blogs uh, that have a fair bit more information. So with that, let's move on. I'm gonna flip over to a machine where we actually are performing this migration. Now this translation engine is taking the geometric network data from a 1021 geodatabase and is combining it with all of the configuration that explains how it should be morphed into a utility network format. Now the destination is still being applied to a 1021 staging geodatabase, but the data inside of it is in a utility network format, and that's what we'll use. So not a terribly exciting process to watch, however, uh, it is very powerful in the background as it is creating all of the components we need for the utility network import. But before we go and look at that inside of utility network, we're going to move forward and actually review and QAQC some of this data inside of 1021. Here we are inside of ArcMap again, looking at our 1021 geodatabase, and we've added in a utility network staging geodatabase as well. So we can take a look at the data we've manipulated, still in 1021, but within our staging geodatabase. We'll first zoom into an overhead transformer location and take a look at a fairly typical overhead uh, transformer uh, that is feeding a couple of service points. Let me go ahead and switch into our no scale mode and we'll go ahead and go into a detail level view. Now inside of our geometric network, note that we do have a pole, a fuse, and a transformer, and it's coming off of a primary overhead three phase line and then feeding out secondary overhead C eastbound into the secondary uh, as we see there. So as we take a look at that, let's see how that translated into the utility network model. So you turn on these layers, you'll see a very similar model, but you'll see a several number of different things that we're showing here. Uh, in this view, we're seeing that the pole has been offset, the fuse and transformer are still in relatively the same locations, and the secondary has been offset as well, and there's no lines drawn within the components here. However, we are able to still establish connectivity. We're going to open up our utility network staging database, and we'll start off by showing connectivity associations. I'm going to simply use the identify tool to take a look at these. Uh, the first ones we have is from the transformers. We have the transformer high side connected to the fuse. We have the transformer low side connected to the connection point outbound on the secondary. And finally, we have a fuse which is connected single terminal over to the connection point. So that's our tap point off of the medium voltage line. Now, these aren't going to be actual lines inside of utility network, but we are using lines inside of our staging database to review this data for QAQC purposes. We can see that connectivity will be established via those connectivity associations. Let's turn those off and take a look at the next type of association. These are structural attachment associations. And in this case, we've actually drawn in three separate lines here, and I'll go ahead and grab those, that are going from, in this case, the pole to the connection point, the pole to the fuse, and the pole to the transformer. And that defines a structural attachment because the poles are now inside the structural network. Our final component is the containment association. You can see here this pink is just showing that the transformer unit has now been promoted to a transformer device, which is now related to a transformer bank. And we can kind of show that here. So we have the transformer device. We have the transformer bank, which is now an assembly. And we have a containment association between the transformer bank 
to the transformer. Now, all these components will be imported to Utility Network to establish the connectivity that we need to drive Utility Network functionality. Let's go ahead and take a look at another scenario, and this is an underground transformer. Typical underground transformer, we see the transformer in the middle feeding out to many service points. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit further to take a look at the detail. So again, we see the transformer in the middle, and once again, we do have a transformer and a transformer bank at the same location. And now we have had the conductors pulled back off. Let's take a look at the associations in this case. Now our connectivity associations are similar, but we'll go ahead and grab these two first. And we have the transformer high side in both cases connected to the primary lines that are flowing through that transformer. We then also have additional lines here for our secondary. And you'll note these are the transformer low side. So this is the terminal low side connection connected to the individual connection points that are outbound on each of the secondary lines. Once again, we can also show the containment association between the transformer bank and the transformer device. And again, that's an assembly to a device relationship. So now we've created this data and we've validated the correct information will come across into the utility network. Our next part of the work is to actually import this data into Utility Network. So we're taking that same staging database uh, at 1021, and we're going to run the SSP Utility Network import utility. And this is going to take the data from the 1021 staging geodatabase and import it into the Utility Network, including the feature classes, the associations, we're going to build the topology, which is the logical network, as well as trace out the circuits involved. We're now going to flip over to a machine that actually has Utility Network running. And notice we are now in ArcGIS Pro. So this is our ArcGIS Pro database. We can see at the holistic level that this circuit did come in, and then we're able to go take a look at some of the details behind this. Let's go to that same location for the overhead transformer. As we zoom farther in on this location, you can see these same features have come across. That We do have the fuse, the pole, the transformer, and the secondary outbound line. One other way that we can go ahead and take a look at this inside of Utility Network is to use our feature properties. So in this case, for example, we can take a look at the transformer point, and we can see that the transformer point has two different junctions. We have a high side, and we can see what it's connected to down below. We have a low side, which we can see what's connected down below, uh, as well as the edge that connects the two of those internally. We're looking inside the network at this point in time. Go ahead and use our Explore button here. And we'll take a look even down on this secondary record. So we identify this record. We can see that the attributes came across but most importantly, the subnetwork name, which is maintained by the utility network, has been set correctly to the FW-1. So we didn't bring that attribute across. That was maintained as part of the circuit tracing the subnetwork management within the utility network. And we'll kind of show you a little bit more about that in just a moment. Next, let's go ahead and run a simple upstream trace from, uh, let's say, this service point. So we identify this point as our starting point for the trace location, and we're going to run an upstream trace, and we're going to leave the default parameters. As we run this trace, we'll go ahead and zoom out to the extent of the selected features. And just as easily, you can see that the trace has occurred in this lower section and has traced all the way back to the source at the substation, performing a typical upstream electric trace. We'll now run a downstream subnetwork trace from the source. Now in this case, I'm going to run the trace from the load side of that source to determine the extent of the circuit. And we're going to run a subnetwork trace from that location, which should impact effectively the circuit that we are tracing. The trace results occur, and let's go ahead and zoom out again to the full extent of this trace. In this case, you can see the entire circuit has been highlighted based on a subnetwork circuit-based trace from the source. Let's go ahead and clear our selection. And let's take a look at that same uh, underground transformer. So in this location, we'll take a look and we'll go ahead and zoom in just a little bit further here. And in this case, we see the data came across correctly. We have the transformer. We also have the related connection points surrounding it on both the primary and the secondary records. And we'll go ahead and perform a downstream trace based on that point. In this case, you can see the secondary records have been highlighted, but the primary records have not, based on managing those voltage levels. Go ahead and zoom to the results. And you can see that we have traced out to the service points as well as the streetlight on the northeast side. 
Let's go ahead and clear our selection one more time. We've talked a lot about the creation of the subnet line. It's a single feature to represent the entire circuit. We're going to zoom out to the full extent of the circuit. And based on this, having been traced out by the utility network, we can now turn on our subnet line. And this effectively represents the entire feature. We can actually turn off the underlying utility network data so that we're only seeing the subnet line. And if we now identify this, you can now see that the FW1 is entirely traced out. We can flash that on the screen. And this is a single feature representing the entire circuit, showing the utility network present, functioning, and connected. We thank you for your time and we hope you've enjoyed this presentation on SSP Innovations migration tool from the geometric network at 1021 into Esri's new utility network.